I wouldn't use income as my primary way of choosing a career. I would use a passion for that career, a, a calling to that career, something that gets you excited when you think about that career. Now, obviously, then you need to take your talent, your passion, your calling, and find a way to monetize it in the marketplace. You can't just say, well, I'm going to be an artist, and all artists starve, and so I'm going to get an art degree and starve. Well, that would be stupid. Instead, you need to say, I'm an artist. Now, how am I going to go into the marketplace as an artist and become one of the best paid artists of all times? I mean, let's bring in tens of millions of dollars and name ourselves Thomas Kincaid. So come up with a way that you go into the marketplace and create what might not be a genre that is always known for paying well, but the way you do it in the market enables you to earn, well, even better than a good living. One time a friend asked me a weird question. We were having a conversation, we were having a cup of coffee, and he said, hey John, what do your voices tell you? And I didn't really know how to answer that. So I said, what do you, what do you mean my voices? He said, well, I've asked a thousand people that question, and nobody has a positive internal voice. Nobody's voice says, you sure are in good shape. You sure are pretty. You're the best person for the football team. You're going to get that scholarship. Nobody's voice says those kinds of things. If anything, they say the opposite. And most of us think they're friends, but they're actually our foes. And so I started to think about that in my own life. I started to listen for those voices, those voices of fear and doubt. Because here's the simple truth. Fear is like criticism. It only gets loud when you do something that matters. And that's what we're trying to help you do is have a life that matters. So as you work on that, you're going to bump into fear. You're going to bump into doubt. And I certainly have in my own life. I mean, when I started to write books, I had a lot of fear and a lot of doubt. My first book was a funny book. It was a humor book. It was illustrated. And when I tried to write my second book, it was hard. I felt this gap between those experiences. And I felt this voice jump into that gap and say, who are you to write a serious book? Who are you to write a business book? Your first book wasn't a real book. It was based on a blog. There's pictures in that book. There's a unicorn in that book. You don't get to write a real book. When you start something new, a lot of us hear that, who are you to do that? Who are you to think you have the talent or the intelligence or the courage to chase that new dream? It might be applying to a school, it might be going out for a play, but there's this fear and this doubt that gets loud when we try new things and fear tries to hold us back. So what do we do in that moment? How do you and I be smart about that moment? Because you're going to bump into fear. Well, I think there's three things you need to do, and I love sharing this type of information. Dave Ramsey always tells me, John, inspiration without instruction is useless. So I wanna talk a little about instruction. What do you do when you bump into fear? Well, the first thing you do is you write it down. You write down that voice. You know, fear is loud and big inside your head with so many colors, but you write it down on a piece of paper and you start to see how small it is, how silly it is. You start to see for what it really is. The second thing I want you to do, I want you to refute it with truth. Not argue with it, not go back and forth. You'll get tangled and lose so much of your day if you try to argue with your voice. No, I just want you to write one true sentence. Here's an example from my own life. One morning I got up, it was Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. and I heard this voice say, you're too late, the week is already over. And so I wrote it down. And I refuted it. I put one sentence of truth. I said, the week has just started. It's 7.30 a.m. on a Monday. I couldn't have more time available if I wanted to. So that's the second thing I want you to do. And the third thing, I want you to share that voice. Do you know what fear fears? Community. Fear is terrified of you connecting with other teenagers that have the same struggles, the same challenges, the same opportunities. Fear always tries to put you on an island, to isolate you, to make you think you're the only one that struggles with something you're not. Right now, in this classroom setting, there are other friends that have the same struggles and the same fears and the same doubts. You've got to share those. And you've got to have a friend that'll walk this road with you. Because as we do this, as we work on lives that matter, we need support. This is a long road and you're going to need people that walk it with you. So that's my hope, is that you'll think about your voices. You'll be deliberate about your voices because they're going to happen. You will have some fear. You will have some doubt, and when you do, do those three simple things. Write them down, refute it with truth, and then share it. That's the only way 
to really beat your fear.